Hey, hey, Lightroomers. Welcome to another episode of my Learning Lightroom series of videos. Now, today I want to look at making a slideshow from start to finish. So, without further ado, let's dig in. Now, here you can see I've got a, quite a lot of files in my Lightroom Work Files uh, folder. And I've got two here called Slideshow 1. And there's what's in that and slideshow 2. So the images are actually in different folders which makes it a little bit difficult to put them together. What I'd need to do is to create another folder and then put all these images in that folder. But there's a cleverer way of working and that's with collections. So I'm going to make a collection which is a virtual collection of, of the images that I want and I can have them in from different folders. So let's have a look at that. We'll go down and we'll click on the new collection button. And I'll create a collection and I'll call it my slideshow. And I'll click create. And there it is. It's got no images in because I haven't put any in yet. So I'm going to now go up to my slideshow one folder. I'll click on the first one and then I'll select them all with Control or Command and A if you're on a Mac to select them all and then just drag them into the My Slideshow collection. Then I'm going to go to my Slideshow 2 folder. Again, I can click on the first one, shift click on the last one to select them all and drag them into me My Slideshow collection. So I've now got 19 photographs in my slideshow collection and I've separated them out now from all the rest of the images because I just want to make a slideshow of these and it's just going to be confusing if I've got another 300 images on my timeline um, that I'm having to deal with. So now my collection goes through all the modules. So if I now go onto my slideshow module you can see here we've got a collection section and now I'm only using these 19 images which is the ones I want to use for my slideshow. Okay so where do we start? Well let's start on the left hand side in the template browser. And we can see here there's, there's ones that ship with Lightroom and we've got one called caption and rating, we've got a crop to fill, Exif Metadata, Simple and Widescreen. I'm going to start off just with the simple one. They all have little different quirks, but I'll start off with a simple. And what this has got, it's got a nice black background and it's got a little logo thing in the corner which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, all that being done, it's just a case of now going and starting to go down the right hand side to actually customise my slideshow. So let's start at the top. We've got zoom to fill frame. Well, that's okay. That's going to fill the frame or the cell with or the, where these white lines are um, with the image. But the problem is if you've got any portrait images, what that's going to do is if I do zoom to frame, it's going to basically cut off top and bottom of my image, which I don't want. So I'm going to leave that unticked. Now this is a nice black background so next one down is stroke border. Well at the minute I've got a stroke border that's black against a black background so you're not going to see it. I, I sometimes like a nice white border, a very thin white border. So I'm going to choose a colour from the colour picker. I'm going to pick white And then I can control how wide that I want this border. Do I want it thick or do I want it thin? Well, I like it just a little, say one pixel, just to pick it out from the black background. Now, next section is a cast shadow, is a drop shadow. Well, the drop shadow is going to be black, so you're not going to see it against this black background. So I'm no, I can switch that off or leave it on. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to see it anyway. OK, let's go down to Layout. Now, Layout is where you define where these guides are. These are called guides. And if I hover over one, you see I'll get this little double arrow. 
and I can click and drag top and bottom to reposition where the image is. Now I can also drag on the sliders. Now at the moment they're all fixed together, they're all linked. So if I move one, I move them all. I can if I want change that, I can unlink them. So if I go and unlink with, just take that little tick box out of there. Now I can move each of these independently. So I want to, if I want a, a slightly offset uh, image, I can put it over to the side. If I need some more room top and bottom, I can decide where I want to go. So let's just have a quick look with the landscape one. Yeah, I'll have a nice bit of room above and below for portrait and landscape. I think that looks good. Okay, next, let's go to overlays. Now this is using your identity plates that you may or may not have created. And that's what this is up in this top corner here. It's an identity plate. Now just so we can see it, I'm going to click on it and then drag on the corner just to make it a bit bigger. And of course, now the identity plate is whatever's at default. Well, this is a new catalog I've created for this video. So it's just coming up at Lightroom. And what I can do is I can drag this and you see it's got like a piece of elastic on it and I can lock it into position either on the image or on the slide itself. Well, I'll tell you what, let's put this down at the bottom and we'll centralize it. Because what I think I might do is have my logo, one of my logos that comes on every slide. Okay, so I'm going to define a new identity plate. And I do that over here. I'm going to click this little triangle and click edit. And now I've got two options. I can use a style text identity plate or I can use a graphical one. Well, let's go for a graphical one. And I'm now going to locate the file. And it's here in my training admin folder. And I've got a logo green and white. So I'm going to click it and then choose it. And I'll save it out just as a, so I can use it again. So I'll say logo green white, just so I know what it is. And then click save. And then OK. And there it is. It now appears here and I can reposition this wherever I like. But I'm going to put it in the middle on the bottom. Something like that, or maybe that way, a tad. Okay, well, I'm quite liking that. Okay, next one down, watermarking. Well, I could watermark it if I wanted. And I've got some watermarks here. We can try, let's try that one. And if I wanted, I could put that one as a watermark, but it's really a bit, a bit of an overkill. So on this slideshow, I'm not going to watermark. I'm happy enough with the branding that's on the bottom of each slide. I can view my rating stars if I want. I, honestly, I, I don't tend to use that very much, but you can do if you like. I'm not going to do on this one, but at the moment, say they're, they're black against a black background, so you can't see them. Text overlays. These are overlays that you can put and you can define exactly what they are. So I'm going to have them as white. So I'm just going to make sure that white is selected as the colors and there's a ticking text overlays. And the text overlays are defined down here on the toolbar where this says ABC. So I'll click on it and I'll say, well, where is it this? Well, it's York. So we'll call it York. And what this is going to do is put this text overlay on every slide. So I'll press the return key and it brings up York. And again, I've got this little magnet that I can move it around and position it exactly where I like. There we go. OK, now backdrop. Do I want a backdrop? Well, I can change the backdrop, but at the moment it's just black. I could put in what's called a color wash. And this is like a gradient. So if I click on that and we'll say pick, well, we'll pick white. And what we're doing now is we're fading 
from basically black through to white through a series of greys. And you can decide what how opaque you want it and the angle at which you want it to fade top to bottom left to right at 45 degrees whatever. Again on this one I, I still prefer my black background so I'm not going to have the colour wash on. Do I want a background image next? Well sometimes this can be quite effective actually and you can drag any image from your, your timeline. So I'll say yes I want the background image and I'm going to click and drag any one let's say my candles I'll drag them and drop them into that little box there and we can then change the opacity to fade it into the background a little if that's what we like and I don't think that looks bad yeah, I think I'll leave that on I can change the background color completely if I want at the moment we set to black I can change that to anything I like let's say we could go to white but in this case I do think the black looks quite nice so I'm going to leave it set to black next we have titles and in titles we can define and what they call intro and outro screens and these are little screens that you can that come on that'll just introduce your video and then say thank you for watching the video and it uses identity plates again now if we look down here in the timeline you can see I've created a couple of slides one that sent an intro one that says this is a York experience and another one that says thank you for watching which is my end slide so I'm going to create some identity plates with them so I'm going to go into it and say yes I want an intro screen well at the minute it just puts on Lightroom so I'm going to go to edit I want to use a graphical one because it's an actual JPEG image and I need to locate the file now I know this one is in my training it's not in there in my introduction to Lightroom and my work files and if I just scroll down to slideshow one and scroll down to the bottom then here are the two slides that I've made so I'll define the first one as my start slide I'm going to click choose and I'll save it so I can use it later I'll save it as me start slide and click save and click OK and now here it appears in this little box and I can scale it I click and drag it I'll make it nice and big I like that okay now my end screen I'm going to have one of those as well so I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to define it as an identity plate I'll edit use graphical we'll go and locate it and it's here down at the bottom my end slide so I'm going to choose that one and I'll save it out with a name again so I can use it over and over again and I'll call this me end slide and click save and OK and again I'll scale it to make it nice and big so it comes at the end okay we're nearly done next thing is music yeah we can add a music soundtrack to this so I'm going to click on the plus to add a soundtrack again I've navigated to my Lightroom work files and my slideshow or you'd navigate to wherever this soundtrack was and there is a soundtrack it's an mp3 file so I'm going to click on it and select choose and that's put my soundtrack in there and you can define in Lightroom CC up to 10 soundtracks and stack them together okay finally we've got playback well let's leave this at automatic let's go for syncing the slides to the music We've got an audio balance at video and music. I'll, I'll put it about a third there. 
Um, there isn't an option now for the Ken Burns effect. They've called it the pan and zoom. And what this does is it just makes the slides move a little bit. And it just gives you and just holds your attention a little bit more. And we'll click on that. And you can define, do you want it a little bit or do you want it a lot? I'll try it somewhere like that. Do I want to repeat the slideshow over and over again? Yeah, I'll leave that in. And then the quality. What quality do I want? Well, I'll leave that at standard. Gonna... And then that's it. That is us done. So what I'm going to do now is go right back to the beginning and I'll click on that first slide. And then we've got two button, two options here for preview and for play. Now, if I click preview, what it's going to do is to play the slideshow within the Lightroom environment. Stop it by clicking on the stop button. Now play goes full screen. So if I click play, it'll now take the whole of the screen up, which will run off the edge of where, where you can see. But you can see it's pretty big now. Okay, so I'm going to press escape to stop that. Well, that looks pretty cool. The only other thing really is now, what can we do with it? Well, we can play it within Lightroom to anybody. But what happens if we want to take it outside of Lightroom? Well, we have two options there. We've got export as a PDF. Now, this will export it as a PDF format document. Obviously, it won't take any soundtracks with it because this is something you could print off each of the slides. Or we can export it as a video. Now this may take quite a while, so I'm not going to let you suffer this in <laughs> and watch this happening. But let's say go to the desktop and we'll call this my slideshow. And it's going to save it as an MP4 file. And we can choose really any presets that you want. I'll save it out as the smallest so it does it quicker. And then I'll click save. Now up at the top here you can see that the progress bar is telling me that it's exporting my slideshow as a video. And we'll just wait a sec for that to finish. And that's done. Now if I just minimize Lightroom just for a second, we'll see that here on my desktop I've now got a video file called My Slideshow. And if I double click on that, it'll actually play it for me. I'll just bring Lightroom back. And there we have it. How to make a slideshow and export it start to finish. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit my website kenfisherphotography.com. If you did like it, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment. If there's any videos you think I should be making that you would find useful, leave me a comment and I'll do my very best to make it. Okay. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.